Now let me give you this gist. This lady came to me and she said, you know what, Sibosso, I like this guy. He's like a 10 over 10. He's kind, all of that, you know. But he's too short. Really? Hi, my name is Bosso Adewale. I am a certified faith-based family and marriage counselor. I love to talk about everything marriage, backed up by my Christian faith. So join me every week as we discuss those marital issues. And if you have a question, don't hesitate to send me a DM. Let's talk about them. Singles always ask the same question. What red flags should I look out for in the person I'm going to marry? I don't want to talk about red flags or green flags. I don't want to talk about any flags. I just want us to talk about common sense and biblical examples. It is common sense, for example, for you to marry a man who is kind, who is thoughtful. It is common sense for you to think twice before saying yes to someone that doesn't make attempt to call you, to reach out to you. So in deciding on who to spend your entire life with, you have to be deliberate and intentional. For example, when deciding who to have as a roommate, you can say about some people, oh, this girl talks too much. I don't think I can live with her. This person is too sloppy. I don't think I can live with her. Now, how much more this one person that you're going to spend the rest of your life with? You have to ask yourself very many questions. Do our goals align? I have an example. Um, recently, a lady came and, you know, she found this person that she said, she likes this guy and they were good. But as far as she was concerned, she said, you know what? I think my destiny is in the UK. And this guy has no plan whatsoever to jack back. So obviously there is a problem. One person has decided to stay in Nigeria. The other person says, you know what? The moment we get married, we have to start making plans of getting away from Nigeria. Your values, your goals have to align. So that's one question you need to ask yourself. Do our goals align? Are we headed in the same direction? Yes, you may meet and um, agree to get married to someone who initially you don't have the same goals. You know, marriage is all about making compromises. Are you able to sit with this person? Are you able to agree on those things that? you don't agree on? Are you able to make compromises for each other? It is common sense for you to decide to settle down with someone that listens to you, that values your opinion. You also need to ask yourself, do I feel safe with this person? You know, most of the people in um, abusive marriages, they saw the ink ahead. They saw little, little bit of little things that they chose to ignore. It could be if I slap you, you know, get out of here, you know, all of those little things. This is the person you're going to sleep with and wake up with every single day of your life. Think about it. If he is this way right now, how bad will it get when you begin to bear his name, when you begin to live under his roof? All of these toxic traits, we see them. You know, it doesn't, it may be as simple as someone who doesn't call, he doesn't take initiative to call you. You're always the one making the calls. You call morning, afternoon, night to send messages. When he likes, he responds. The other times he doesn't respond. And would you still go ahead to decide to marry this person? Those are commonsensical issues. It is also common sense for you to decide to be with someone you can talk to freely. No hairs about them. It's not a master-slave kind of relationship. And it will amaze you how many people are in a relationship, not marriage, though, a relationship with people that they cannot have a comfortable conversation with. These are commonsensical issues. And another thing you should think about is what do your friends think about this person? What do your parents say about this person? 
Yeah, you may say, well, it's my choice, it's my decision. But think about it. If everyone around you is saying the same thing about this person, just take a step back and watch. Now, I'm assuming you're a Christian, so it is not enough for someone to tell you that, oh, well, God showed me or God said to me that you are my wife, and then you just go along with it. Has God told you the same thing? God is not an author of confusion. If God is telling him, I believe God will be telling you too. God told Abraham, he confirmed to Sarah. You see, God does not, God will not force you to be in a relationship with someone that you don't want to be in a relationship with, right? So those are commonsensical issues. Also, do you trust them? Are they accountable? Are they open about the things they are doing, where they are going, the people they are with? Are they accountable? Ask yourself all of these things. You see these things. Don't ignore these little signs. You trust them. Be honest with yourself. Kindness, empathy, you know, all of those things are the things you should look out for. Those are commonsensical things. This is not, we are not talking red flags. This is just common sense. Someone who is loving, kind, generous. There are so many biblical examples of the kind of man that you should look out for, for marriage. I have a few on my list here. You can add to your list. A man like Abraham. Abraham loved God. In fact, God called him his friend. Abraham had a lot of regard for God. He had God. He respected God. He obeyed God. A man that hears God, a man that honors God, is a perfect man to marry. Now, remember when um, Sarah decided that Agai had to leave? Of course, Abraham would have been upset. Remember, he had a child by her. And as a father, he would love his child. And I can even imagine that he probably also had feelings for Haggai. So, but Sarah wanted Haggai to leave. A man, because Abraham heard God, Abraham obeyed God. You know, he had, he had, I believe that, you know, it wasn't really easy on him to let go of his own son, Ishmael. But because God said, you know what, let him go. So when a man hears God, it is to your advantage because God is working in your favor. You can cry out to God concerning whatever issues and God will whisper it in his ears. It's in your best interest to marry someone who loves God, who respects God, who honors God. Ultimately, a man who is a friend of God. You can't get it wrong with that. Another biblical example is Boaz. We all love Boaz, don't we? Boaz was very generous. He was very kind. And ultimately, for me, I think he was very thoughtful. Now, remember that night that Ruth had, um, slept at the feet of Boaz? He woke up very early and said, you know what, you need to leave. So imagine if Ruth left and, um, you know, everybody already gathered. People see her leaving Boaz's room. They'll be like, hmm, what's happening there? What happened with Boaz? But he kept her dignity. He protected her. He provided for her, even when he wasn't even considering marriage with her. That is the kind of man you should look out for. Another man that I like to talk about is the Proverbs 31 husband. We don't talk about this man enough. This man is a man that is secured in himself. He married a very successful woman and her success did not in any way intimidate him. He was secured in himself. He gave her room to bloom. He gave her room to become all that she could become. That is the kind of man you should look out for. A man that is not intimidated by your success, a man that's proud of you, you know, happily shows you off. 
He's not saying, oh yeah, my wife is earning more than me. You know, she's, no, he was happy for her. He was himself an honorable man. And in spite of that, he did not relegate his wife. So the back, the Proverbs 31 husband is the kind of husband you want to be with. The finally on my list of biblical examples is um, Joseph, the father of Jesus. You know, this guy did something amazing when he found out that Mary was pregnant with Jesus. He knew that, well, I had not done anything with this girl. And imagine this girl told me she was a virgin. And now she's telling me she's pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, right. You, you can imagine how, how that conversation went. But because he was kind-hearted, because he was a good man, ah, he said, you know what? I'm going to put her away secretly. I'm not going to expose her to open shame. Now, let's assume that Mary did what you know, he thought he did. Look for a man that will cover your shame. Not the one that will expose you. Not a kind of man that will go on blog and say, yeah, you know, I dated that. But no, come on. And in all of these things, there's one common thing about all these men that I've mentioned. They feared God. This is not just, oh, he attends church. He attends my church. He's a worker in church or he's a pastor. Does he fear God? Does he love God? Does he respect and regard God? Does he listen to God? Those are the questions you should ask yourself. So even if this man come looking like a total package, so that and answer, ask yourself, does he fear God? If that answer is yes, yes, you can consider it. So we've talked about common sense and um, we've checked out some biblical examples. Now, let me give you this gist. So this lady came to me and she said, you know what, Tiboso, I like this guy. He's like a 10 over 10. He's kind. He's all of that, you know. But he's too short. Really? He's too short. You know, those are the kind of statements <laughs> that make us see that even you as a woman, you may not be ready to get married. So when you're so fickle-minded that the things that you're looking out for is the height, what car he drives, where he lives, those are very fickle things. I think by far the most important thing to look out for in a man, oh, and yes, please, this, all of these men that I mentioned, you may notice that none of them is lazy, you know. They were providers. They weren't lazy men. So that is very, very important to look out for. Them. Not what are we doing? We are hustling. No, hustle is not a job. What do you do? You know, it has to have something doing, right? Well, in all of this, the Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Don't marry a fool. So now I've told you some of the things you should look out for in the man you want to marry. Next week, let's talk about you. How do you know that even you are ready for this marriage? See you next week.